What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping back into Destiny 2 with the weekly vendor and rewards refresh for the 4th of April. And so as always in the video, we'll cover all of the new vendor loot for the week, such as Eververse, but also Banshee's weapons, and of course the featured roles. And then Ada 1's armor and shaders, plus key content changes, bonus ranks, the Nightfall weapon, featured Lost Sector exotics, and everything else to know regarding rewards this reset. And so, as always, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and if you do, be sure to get subscribed for more Destiny content, but otherwise, let's get into it. And so, as we get into the game initially, we should mention that the Iron Banner has returned already. It was a pretty short gap between the two events for the first couple of times this season. And of course, Lord Saladin has all of the rank rewards. I haven't actually played any Iron Banner this season just yet, but this week it is featuring Eruption. And of course, on top of the roles that you can get at various ranks, we do have new focusing options for the Iron Banner. So let us know down below if you'll be jumping into the Iron Banner this week. But then looking at Neomuna, of course we get the reset for the destination right here. So we've got the new weekly mission, which has rotated all the way back around to First Contact. And the Vex Incursion Zone has moved to a Himsa Park right here as well. Plus, we get the Partition Ordinance mission this week. Then in the Root of Nightmares, as always, we do have a new weekly challenge. This time it's the Crossfire Challenge, so it'll be interesting to jump in and check that one out. But otherwise, of course, the main story thread for the season has now wrapped up. Next though, let's get into the vendor stuff for the week, and we'll start out at Banshee right here. So, for the featured weapons for today and for the full week of course, initially we have the Imperial Needle on the front page right here with Killing Wind and Swashbuckler. Not a terrible role, but also this Judgment of Kelgarath with Genesis and Unstoppable Force. And then we've got the Battle Scar with Shoot to Loot and Eye of the Storm. He did have a Kinetic Tremors role of this a few days ago, which was pretty juicy. But there's also the Farewell Sidearm right here. This one's got Full Auto Trigger System and Frenzy. But finally, there is also the Class Swords. I'm on the Titan, so we can see the Crown Splitter right here. And this one has Heavy Guard and Thresh, as well as Counter Attack for the final trait. So not the absolute best roll that you could get on that thing. But moving over to the second page with the weekly weapons, we've got the Lunilata 4B combat bow right here with Ensemble and successful warm-up. And then the Orvendale Fusion Rifle right here has Hipfire Grip and Elemental Capacitor. We've got the Stochastic Variable SMG as well with Zen Moment Elemental Capacitor. And then the Amit Auto Rifle, the first time I believe that Banshee sold this this season. Uh, this one's got Well-Rounded and Pugilist. And we've got the Typhon Grenade Launcher with Impulse Amplifier and Frenzy, as well as the Marsilian Sea Grenade Launcher, and this one's got Turnabout and Vorpal Weapon. So a couple of items right there, perhaps worth picking up, but be sure to check in throughout the week as some of these roles will change. But let us know your thoughts on the weapons in the comment section. Heading down to check out Shader 1 though, and she's got the Prodigal armor set right here. Of course, this will be available for all three classes. And looking at the Titan, there certainly aren't any standout stat rolls, but if stat rolls are what you're after, be sure to check in on your various characters. And then she's got the Shaders for the week, which are 10,000 Glimmer each. And initially we have the Vitrified Duality right here. Kind of a nice shader. Bit curious on this particular armor set. But there is also the Tangled Rust Shader, a rare shader from back in Forsaken right there. And finally, the new Monarchy Shader, the new Monarchy Succession. So if you need to pick up any of these and add to the collection, this week will be a good time to do so. And the final vendor item right here is the Eververse store for the week. As always, there'll be a bunch of stuff available for silver, but we've got the Can't Go On rare emote available this week. A pretty cool one right there that you can pick up for 400 bright dust. We also have the Exotech shell from back in Season of the Seraph available right there. Another pretty awesome one, which is 2850 bright dust. And then we get the Catch Flight Entrance Transmat effect for 450 bright dust. And the two featured shaders for 300 bright dust each this week are the Laguna Cruiser. But we also have the Polished Sea Stone. That does it for the front page, but moving to the main Bright Dust section, we do have a new multiplayer emote, and this is the Arcade Games multiplayer emote, kind of themed after the Lost Sector on Near Muna right there. You can pick that up for 4,250 Bright Dust, pretty expensive. We are now getting armor sets or armor pieces, sorry, from the Eververse set this season, so of course we're on the Titan once again, but boots are available for all three classes, and they're 1,200 Bright Dust this week. And then we've got the Kit Shell, a new exotic ghost shell right there, for this season, and that one is 2850 Bright Dust, but we're also seeing an ornament right here for Trust, which is 700 Bright Dust, and this is the Blind Faith ornament from back in the Black Armory uh, era right here, so if you're looking to add any older ornaments to the collection, we can do it this week, but 
There is the Exohelion ship, an exotic ship right there for 2,000 Bright Dust, another one from back in Season of the Seraph. And the weapon ornament this week for the exotic weapon is for Trespasser, and this is the Shiro's Watch ornament right here. Pretty cool one, uh, with a bit of nostalgia from back in Rise of Iron, and that's 1,250 Bright Dust. And then there is the Magic Trick projection right there for your ghost shells. If you fancy that cute rabbit, it is 1,500 Bright Dust. But for shaders on the second page, we've got a polished sea stone once again. And then we've got the carbon blood shader. Pretty cool red and black shader there. All of these are 300 bright dust. There's also the rust berry shader, which is very, very dark in some places and kind of brown in others. A curious one. Uh, but we also have the reef regalia shader right here, which is a cool one from back in season of the last. But finally, there is the ossified entrance transman effect, as well as the harpy entrance, and finally the ghost purple transman effect, and all of these are 450 bright dust this week. Another quick shout right here, but we are going to get bonus gambit ranks all week long, so if you're looking to level up with the drifter, this is going to be a good time to dive in. Now though, to mention the nightfall reward for this week, the featured weapon will be the swarm, and of course this is an arc high impact frame machine gun. The bonuses for this weapon were updated with the start of Season 20, so looking at the top rolls it can get, in the first treat slot it's able to roll Feeding Frenzy, and we can see that is a very popular bonus right there, but it's also able to get Dynamic Sway Reduction, Rangefinder, Genesis, Well Rounded, or Offhand Strike in the first trait slot, so naturally Feeding Frenzy for the reload speed and Dynamic Sway Reduction, Improved Accuracy and Stability are especially good bonuses on this. Then in the second trait slot, this can now roll Target Lock, and damage increases the longer the weapon remains on a target, that's a really good bonus for machine guns. But also the classic Vorpal Weapon, which increases damage against bosses, vehicles and guardians in their super. Then it's able to get Dragonfly, as well as Golden Tricorn, Tap the Trigger, or Pugilist. So that combo of Feeding Frenzy target lock, or even Dynamic Sway Reduction target lock, especially for DPS, is really strong. But if it's damage you're after, of course Vorpal Weapon is very good as well. Although there are other options on the weapon, so give us your thoughts about it down below. And of course the Swarm also gets Stunning Recovery, where stunning a champion partially refills the magazine, triggers health regen, and improves recovery. Or Vanguard's Vindication, where final blows on the weapon grant a small amount of health. So give us your thoughts about the Swarm down below, any top rolls that you have, or ones that you're going after in the Nightfall this week. But our final mention right here is for the Lost Sectors and the exotic slots that are dropping this week. So for today, we've got the Gilded Precept dropping exotic gauntlets. So that's over on Neomuna. But then for April 5th, it'll be the excavation site in the EDZ dropping exotic chest pieces. It'll be Skydock dropping exotic helmets on April 6th. Then for April 7th, we'll get the quarry dropping exotic legs. Aphelion's Rest will roll around on April 8th, dropping exotic gauntlets. Then we got Chamber of Starlight dropping exotic chest pieces for April 9th. And for Monday, April 10th, Perdition will drop exotic helmets. Otherwise, guys, for today, that is everything that we have to round up inside of the video. So, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this one and found it useful. And if you have, feel free to get subscribed to the channel so I can keep you posted with everything else related to the game. Otherwise, though, I appreciate you tuning in as always. A rating below really does help us out as well if you've enjoyed the video. And otherwise, whatever you get up to, I hope you guys have an awesome day.